Shalom. Welcome to each one, reach one. We're continuing our study today our, of uh, Christianity versus the Bible. Sorry, I have so many different lessons going on at once. I had to remember which one I'm working on. All right, Christianity versus the Bible, part 28. All right, my goal is to edify those who are in Christianity, is to bring you out, to bring you to the blessings that are, that are due for the children of Israel and the blessings that are scheduled for those of the other nations who bless Israel, those who cleave unto Israel. If you don't know who Israel is, if you're trying to cling to those people over there calling themselves Israelis in that land, lying as if they have fulfilled prophecy, as if they are the bloodline, then you're going to be in trouble. If you don't understand the prophecies, if you don't understand real history and what happened in history and how the biggest identity theft in all of history happened to the so-called Black people during slavery, the only, it wasn't just a stolen from our lands or our heritage was stolen. Why do you think it was stolen? Why do you think that we were no longer able to practice our own customs and, and, and speak our own language? Why do you think the customs of our oppressors was forced on us? Because of what they had to hide. And we were just Africans, lowly Africans, right? Lowly Hamites, as they would love you to believe. Why go through the whole process of stealing our heritage from us, not allowing us to practice our customs. Why? Because our, the practicing of our customs showed who we are. How would, you, how would the world believe that we were just lowly Africans and Hamites if yet we're walking around here with all of these Hebrew Israelite customs? It wouldn't vibe right. People would have questions, right? If we were speaking Hebrew, people would have questions. If we were still wearing our fringes and and, and doing all these other things that indicate that we're Israel. People would have questions, but they had to eliminate all of those questions, all of the possibilities. They had to make it easier to oppress us. You have been trampling on the sons and daughters of the Most High this entire time. If you don't begin to come from that wickedness and that evil, repent, and bless Israel, the real Israel, not only are you not going to be raptured away during the tribulation, you're going to experience the worst possible scenario you could possibly imagine. Everything that you've heard about the tribulation is going to be much, is, is nothing compared to what it's actually going to be like and you're not going to be raptured away. You're not going to be saved from it. You're going to go through it, and you will be destroyed by it. Those of you who aren't destroyed by it will be taken captive by the Israelites. You better understand that. But without further ado, let's get into the lesson. Let us begin, though, by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Wahab Rakadash. I just did so much talking during my lead-in. I can't remember if I if I started off properly acknowledging my power, but if I did it already, it doesn't hurt to do it twice. And just because I love him so much, I'm gonna do it thrice. All praise, honor, and glory to my heavenly father, the Holy One of Israel, and to his redeemer, Yahweh Bashem Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Wahab Kadash. All right, I feel better. Let's get into it. So we ended in Matthew chapter nine. We're gonna pick up and begin here in Matthew chapter 10, all right? And I'm going to begin at verse five. Let's go. These 12, Yahweh Shai sent forth, the 12 apostles. He's sending them out on their mission to go preach the kingdom of heaven and listen to what he tells them. Red letter, you know, that means Yahweh Shai is speaking. All right. These 12, Yahweh Shai sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans into ye not but go rather to the lost sheep of the world no the, I mean of the earth I mean of the house of Israel 
<laughs> right? See, that's what that's probably what it has to be like to be a Christian. Because even though you can see the words there, it's like somehow your brain starts to replace the words you see with the words you want to be there, with the words you were told are there, with the words that fit your narrative so that you can justify your belief that salvation is for you. But again, this is the New Testament. And this is Yahweh Shai out of his own mouth. Once again, from his own lips, he's telling his disciples, don't go to the other nations, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. They were sent to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel only to preach that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Why would he send them only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel to preach that the kingdom is at hand if the, if the kingdom is for every body? If God so loved the whole world that he sent his only begotten son, that's for the whole world. So you have to ask yourself, is your understanding wrong or is the most high wrong? Is your understanding incorrect or is his son incorrect? You have a conundrum. Quite the dilemma you have there on your hands, Christian. Are you going to say that he really didn't say that, that he didn't mean that when he said it? Or are you going to admit that your understanding was wrong? Are you going to admit that your pastor, your preacher, taught you wrong? What are you going to do? You got to make up your mind. You can't have it both ways. Verse 17. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils. And they will scourge you in their synagogues. Why didn't he say they will scourge you in their churches, in their mosque, right? He said they will scourge you in their synagogues because he's talking about people who live in Israelite towns. He's talking to Israelites. He's talking about Israelites. The entire book is by, to, and for one people, the nation of Israel. You can't get around it. Scriptures don't help you get around it. You have been lied to. You have to admit this. You have to recognize this. You have to flee from the church. Come out. Verse 18. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. For it is not ye that speak, but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you. But before I, I continue in verse 21, let me come back because I can already hear it. See, I have so many of these conversations and that I, I can already hear the arguments out there. I can hear the Christians saying, well, well, but the Gentiles, right? You know, the, the book and Peter and, and Paul and the other apostles and, you know, they, they went to the Gentiles. So I can already see you're having a conflict because you're like, well, if Yahweh shy, or who you would call Jebus, if he's saying that the Israelites will be brought before governors and kings for his sake, for testimony against them and the Gentiles, but what about then, then were the apostles going rogue by preaching to the Gentiles? No, your understanding is rogue. There are no contradictions in the book, only contradictions of your understanding. Okay? 
This is the thing. There are contradictions of understanding because what you don't realize is that there are two separate categories of Gentiles. And you have to understand which category of Gentile is being regarded in the particular text that you're reading. The two different categories of Gentiles are one, those who are Gentiles by blood. Those who are Gentiles by blood are of the seed of Japheth. Okay? The nations of Japheth are referred to as Gentiles. The non Israelites, right? The Gentiles by blood are called, I mean, yeah, Gentiles by blood is one category. And then there are those who are Gentiles by practice, by custom. These are the Israelites who have gone away from the customs of Israel and have gone into the customs of the nation that they were taken captive by. And so they have become, they are called Gentiles as well because they have been joined unto their oppressors. They have been joined unto, unto the nations that took them captive and have taken on their traditions and their customs. The same way right now, we Israelites in America, who you call African-Americans, because we are here in America and have been here for so long, we take part in your Christmas. Well, I don't anymore, but many take part in your, your holidays, your traditions, and, and all of these things. They talk in, lang talk in language and and, and so forth, we don't have our customs that, that are uh, ours. We have yours. We have the customs of the other nations. So we would be considered Gentiles under these circumstances, okay? So you have to know when it's speaking to those who are Gentiles by blood and when it's speaking to those who are the Israelites who are Gentiles by blood by custom and practice, okay? Those Gentiles who the Israelites preached to were those of their brethren, were the Israelites, were the lost sheep. They were lost. They have gone astray. They were no longer of the fold. They, are, they have been taken captive and they spoke the language of, the, of the, the nations who they were taken captive by and they practiced the customs and traditions of those they were taken captive by. I hope that has been cleared up for you. Let's continue, verse 21. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death and the father the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. You notice how there's one group of people who seem to be hated of all men of all the, the nations of the earth. You notice how that's us, that so-called African-American, the quote unquote black people. Hated by all, hated by all. Why? For his namesake, because we bore his name, right? We, we because we, we were the, the walking representatives of him. We were the extension of him. We are the extension of him in the earth. So if you can't get at God, you get at his people. If you can't get to the savior, you get to his people. It's the same thing any gang member does, any mafia or, or whatever. When you can't get to the person you want, you go, you go and you get at those who are closest to them that you have access to. And that's the reason why we have become the most hated, despised, and persecuted people on the entire planet. This is the reason. Right? But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the son of man become. Listen, you shall not have gone over the cities of Israel, not the cities of the world, not the cities of the earth, not the cities of the heathens or the cities of the Gentiles. He says over the cities of Israel. It's very specific. Okay. Continue on. Let's come down. Verse 33. But whosoever shall deny me before men, 
whomsoever of Israel. Y'all got to stop trying to apply words like this to everybody. See, it says whosoever. Yes, but whosoever of the people who this, this gospel has been preached to. Okay, keep it in context. But whosoever of the nations that we're that that are preached to, which is only the Israelite nations, whosoever of Israel shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I am come not to send peace, but a sword. We had to touch on this because you know there are sayings out out there like God is love and Jesus is love and you know what I'm saying. He loves everybody and he loves the whole world. He loves everybody and he just want to save everybody. And he wants to squeeze and hug everybody and party and, and, and chill with everybody. But he says, think not that I'm coming to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. But a sword. You, so you don't even know the character of him. You don't know him. You don't know his words. You don't know his character. You don't know anything that he was about. You don't understand the scripture. This is the reason why non-Israelites are not supposed to handle the word of God. Because it has not been given. The secrets and the mysteries of the scripture have not been given to the heathens. It has not been given to the Gentiles. It has been given to his people. And especially in this time when he has turned back to his people again and poured his spirit upon us, he's unlocked his secrets and mysteries to us. We are the one that hold the ones that hold the wisdom, the true wisdom of the high power, of the highest. All of the wisdom of the other nations have begun to wax pale, wax old, drying up. Because the world is supposed to seek to his people for true wisdom. So you're supposed to seek to his people for understanding of him. You're not supposed to be able to come to him. We, his people, are his representatives here on this earth. You're supposed to come through us. You're not allowed to come to him. He doesn't hear your prayers. He doesn't listen to you. Okay? Verse 35, for I am come to set man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and the man's foes shall be they of his own household. So how say ye that he loves everybody and he just wants peace and but he told you, I've come not to send peace. But you say he just wants peace and love between all men. That's not what he says. See, you don't know him. You don't know him at all. My fault, my fault. Uh, I hit the wrong button. <laughs> Matthew chapter 11, verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, an Israelite. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. What does he mean? If the kingdom of heaven is a place, how is this place, which is the kingdom of heaven, suffering violence? And who are these violent people taking the kingdom of heaven by force? See, this would be one of those places where you're your understanding is incorrect, okay? Because the kingdom of heaven is referring to the people. It's referring to Israel. It's not referring to a place. The people of Israel are suffering violence. That's the translation when it says the kingdom of heaven because the kingdom of heaven consists of only Israelites. Only Israelites. Therefore, when he says the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, he's saying, the translation is, the Israelites are suffering violence. And the violent people are taking it or 
them by force. Yes, Israel has been taken by force, taken captive, enslaved by all the nations. Even to this day, the true kingdom of heaven, Israel, the true Israel, we suffer violence. The violent, our oppressors, take us by force and hold us and keep us by force daily. For all the prophets and the law prophesied unto John, all the prophets who were of Israel, not of the world, right? And the law, which is Moses, the law, which was given to Moses to give to the people. What people? Israel and only Israel. Prophesied unto John, an Israelite. So here's Yahweh Shai, red letter. Highlighting all of Israel. This is all Israel. And if you will receive it, this is Elias, Elijah. He's telling you about a regeneration that John the Baptist was Elijah from the Old Testament, which was for to come. Meaning he was prophesied in the Old Testament that he would return. That Elijah prophesied that he would return. And he has returned in the form of John the Baptist. Regeneration. Is a real thing. You don't live once. You have multiple lives. This is the reason why the Most High is able to righteously to judge you, regardless of how righteous thing you think you are or how good you think you lived your life in this life. You still have to pay for what you've done in your other lifetimes. That is your judgment. But I never had slaves. Are you sure about that? Maybe not in this lifetime. Yeah, but in your past, there's a good chance that you did. And you're going to have to pay for that. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Everybody has ears. So he doesn't mean everybody that has ears on their head. He is talking about those who are given the spirit of understanding. Let them hear. Because you have to be given the spirit of understanding in order to understand these things. That regeneration is true. A gen regeneration is real. This is the reason why... I'm much of the book doesn't make sense to many people. They don't understand regeneration. That a lot of the characters you see in this book, they are the same people regenerating. Just don't get it. Right? You just don't get it. Verse 22. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. Hell being a condition, not a place, because you can't bring an actual city down to what you people call hell, right? Hell is a condition, the state, the lowest state of being, okay? The lowest state of being, that, is hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. Right? And so, right now, I think I'm going to wind this one down and bring it to, it's to a conclusion, bring it to its conclusion. Because what I want to do is, I, this wasn't the original part of my lesson, but now I'm sitting here thinking, as I just touched on this hell part, maybe I should, I should bring out the scriptures to show you with the book what hell is. I spoke on it, but I know you don't believe me that hell is a condition and a state of being just because I said it. I know you don't believe me because I said it. I mean, I wouldn't just believe me either because I said it. Show me with the book, each one reach one. I get it. I get it. So out of respect for the spirit, which is urging me to be thorough with this and to, to dive into this, I'm going to bring this one to its close right here. And in the next video, I'll pick up 
jumping into the hell, thus saith the scripture. The hell. <laughs> into hell, thus saith the scriptures. Okay? So we'll cover what hell is according to the Bible in our next video. And again, I want to cut it here because this video will go on a lot longer than I want it to if I just jump right into it right now and I'll have to do two parts of it anyway. And I'd rather just keep it all concise and in, in, you know, in orderly fashion in one video. I say that, but I might not be able to even get all of that in one video. I might be able to do it in two. It might be necessary to do it in two. But for the sake of being orderly, I at least want to want to start it. In, in its own video, okay, instead of cutting it off here um, after, you know, a, a few a few verses and then leave you waiting till the next video in order to get more. So for the flow of things, we'll bring it to, to a halt now and pick up in the next video discussing hell according to the scripture, all right? So again, I pray that you all were able to follow along, that you were able to get what you needed to get out of this, right? Don't just... Don't just don't watch this for entertainment. I hope you are you are listening and your your objective is to learn, is to understand, is to be corrected. Correction is godly. Right. And those who who the most high want to be corrected, he wants you to change because he doesn't want to destroy you. He will give you the heart of understanding. He will give you eyes to see and ears to hear. He will allow you to receive this information. Many people can't take in information that's contrary to their belief system, contrary to the found, their foundational beliefs, right? It causes a, 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 a meltdown of cognitive dissonance. You know, they begin to, to have software errors and they, they just shut down and can't compute anything new. Unfortunately for them, because those people will be destroyed in the end. They will be destroyed and the end is upon us. There's no more time to play. There's no more time to remain in the dark. Ignorance is not bliss. You gotta get it right because to get it wrong is to make a grave mistake. Literally, grave mistake. So for those of you who are following along, good for you, hats off to you. That means you've been moved in the spirit to be here, to listen. You wanna be correct versus being right. And that's a great sign. That's a great sign. So. With that said, let us give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Waha Rakakadash. See you guys on the next one. Stay tuned. Shalom.